Constitution in Winnipeg. And now he's in something like uh, three million homes across Canada. Uh, no, it must be more than that, 30 million. It's something like 10 million homes across Canada. It's a huge number. And I've had, I got emails today about, hey, we were on Daystar last night. So how many are watching Daystar TV in whatever part of the world you are, whether you live in Israel or US or Canada or whatever. And so it's just an honor to have those guys here with us. Well, we're getting ready to go, so come and grab your seats, everybody, and uh, let's begin the meeting. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that once again we can come before you and enter into your gates with thanksgiving and enter into your courts with praise. So let's stand up, everybody, and we're going to worship the Lord along with Ben and Laura and Ruth and the team, and, and so... Uh, Give somebody a hug or a high five and tell them you're glad to be here and tell them you're going to get it tonight. Welcome to everyone that's watching live on Catch the Fire TV through YouTube. And we're going to have a good night, Carol. Yes, we are. It's been an, an amazing day today and it's going to be fantastic tonight. So, Ben. Over to you.
mercy for today Faithful you have been And faithful you will be You pledge yourself to me And that's why I sing Your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Your praise will ever be
try this song one more time and just to bless the person who's doing PowerPoint thank you for doing PowerPoint we appreciate you the title of this song is behold he comes hopefully that helps you find it <laughs> and we can try it one more time hopefully with words
find your sweetest sound, find your most tender love, and just begin to give it to him. Thank you, Lord, for your presence that's here right now. So, people, it's thick in this place. It's just it's the wonderful glory of God. Just uh, turn around to somebody and uh, bless them and say, may that fiery presence of the Lord come mightily upon you right now. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Remember from last night, you are carrying an anointing. Amen. Pour it into each other. Let that river flow into each and every one. Ah, thank you, Lord. Ah. You know, Carol, it's um, it's amazing as as you and I stand here. We we can't help but think that all of this started 21 years ago. I know. 21 and a half, actually. It's amazing. And ah. Is there anybody in the room that was with us 21 years ago when we did the first Catch the Fire conference over at the hotel? Oh, come on. How cool. Give us a big wave and, uh, <laughs> yeah, a celebration. We, we remember how fantastic that was because it was all so new and so fresh, and we, we didn't know, you know, Okay, we're going to the moon, but what's that going to look like, remember? Right. I do remember. We were just, oh, way over our heads, excited, and uh, God kept coming night after night after night after night. And faithfulness is His yeah. absolute amazing. So here we are 21 years later, and yeah. it's still happening. But yeah. more than that, we, we have just a... A deep knowing in our knower, if you know what I mean, that the Lord is about to launch this thing into a whole other level. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, I think I said the other day, how many are ready for that? And a bunch of you cheered and said yes. And I said, no, you're not, actually, mm -mm. because I think it's going to blow our minds. You know, one of, one of the things the Lord said to me when I'm asking him, what's going on? Like, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? And it was kind of like, what the heck are you doing? You know, that, I didn't put it that way to him, but that's kind of, and what he said was, I'm going easy on you now, uh -huh. so you won't be terrified when the real power shows up. Yeah. So are you ready for that? <laughs> so I don't know how you get ready for that. I don't either. But anyway, just lay hands on somebody near you and say, Get ready for the fire like never before coming upon right. you. Shoot. Come on. 
Thank you, Lord. Ah. And uh, it's, it's actually his, his fiery love, you know? Um, yeah. When I was in England, um, I don't know, six weeks ago or whatever, I spent some time with, with Ben's dad, Clive yeah. Jackson. Ben was, was leading up here with Laura, but his dad, and, and he, was, he was just gave me such a wonderful uh, revelation, really, on, on the coming of the Holy Spirit and how when he fell upon the disciples in Cornelius' household, the word where, where the Spirit fell is the very same word that is used in Luke 10 of the, of the father falling upon the, the returning prodigal son. And so it is an embrace with, with uh, intense uh, love and passion. That's what happened. And so the Holy Spirit, when he falls in fiery power, it is, is never separated from the love of God, you yeah. see. And so there's this intense embrace that he has for you and I. And my prayer is that you will not go home without being transformed by that presence of God. Amen. Because that's wow. what has excited us for all these that's 21 right. years, actually, right? Right. And the testimonies of what people lives have have been transformed and changed and I mean they've just gone and been filled and then gone out and done incredible exploits all yeah. over the world it's been amazing and we look at all of you you know like we, we didn't know you guys really 21 years ago no. but now we have all these I mean we knew our own children <laughs> Lori and Jessica who are amazing as well in the anointing but we didn't know a lot of our spiritual children like right. Duncan and Kate and Steve and Sandra and, yep. and all of you guys on the front row here. But um, just to see what God has done and what he's raised mm. up, it's like the army is being prepared and uh, sure. it's almost ready to get their marching orders, you know? Yeah. And so... Just tell somebody next to you, you've got a fantastic future just, just right around the corner. Yeah. I, I want to say a word to those of you. Well, let me ask this. Who's, who's here for the very first time this week? You've never been here before. Just wave excitedly at me. All right, numbers of you. Well, um, I used to try and mention to everybody, you remember, Carol? I did. Listen, just, just stay with us, you know, don't, don't bolt and cut and run. Um, we're not crazy, really. We're just enjoying the intense power of God. Yeah. And what I, what I like to ask people is this. If you're asking God to touch you mm. and he touches you, yeah. the miracle is not that you fall over. The miracle is that you live through that. <laughs> because yeah. he's the one who spoke and the sun came flying out of his mouth. Let there be light, mm. you know. Yeah. And so get ready for the touch of love that will revolutionize you. And that's the thing that we all found. It was powerful, yes, but oh, so loving. It just reached into the core of your being and changed it forever. Well, I wonder if there's anyone that got a healing either last night yeah. or today. Wave at us. There's lots of healing going on, yeah. There's a gentleman, I remember, what, your shoulder and your neck, wasn't it? Yeah, good today? Fabulous. Why don't you run up here and tell us real quick. But if you received a healing like yesterday or today, why don't you wave excitedly? Just, why don't you stand up and wave excitedly? I mean, excitedly, like, come on, this is a good thing that... Woo. All right, people are, people are waving and, and, and just all over the room. Well, come on up here, sir, and we'll just let Carol find out what's happened to you. I remember you from last night. I feel 
like 27 years old. I'm a, I'm a 72, old man, 72 year old man. Come on. Praise the Lord. Last night, I was sitting over there was a young man, and I told him I'd like to have my eyes healed. So he started praying for me. But nothing happened with my eyes, but the pain, my back here, my shoulder, back here, the neck here, that got healed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I heard uh, Benny Hinn was in Montreal. Then he came back here, God told him to come back. I said, there's got to be a reason why Benny came back. And I thought it was for me, for my eyes. But God works in mysterious ways in his own timing. He and before he takes me, before he takes us home, brother, I believe I'm going to see it with my natural eyes. 2020 vision, Amen. 2020 oh. vision, Lord, give him 2020 vision. Wow! Thank you for the healing. Thank you for his neck. So tell Thank me you about for his tell me about your neck and your back now. Is there no yeah. pain at all? And he couldn't Just move do his shoulder. Like touch your toes or move and do what do what you couldn't do. <laughs> you couldn't do that. <laughs> Stretch your hands toward him and say, fire on you right here. Yeah. Woo. Boom. Shove up. True. Fire on you, Lord. More. In Jesus' name. Oh, oh my, 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 my. Huh. Whoa. Well, we... Um, I, I want you to meet some people. I, I'm looking for John and Patricia. Where did you guys get to? There they are. Why don't you guys come on up here? I, I want you to meet the, the, the ones who pastor this campus under Pastor Steve and Sandra. We have a number of campuses and churches. <laughs> and uh, so these guys are anchoring this congregation here. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's a nice full house, John. What do you think? Whoa. I think this is oh, I think this is really awesome. <laughs> I think it's also really hot up here, John. <laughs> uh, this you know what? I really believe the best is yet to come. I think we're coming to get so filled up and so set on blaze and I don't think we really know what it's gonna look like yet. But I feel that we've got an army that's coming out, an army of love and an army of grace and power and mercy that's going to set the nations ablaze. Wherever we go, you know, wherever we lay the soles of our feet, he's going to give us some territory, John. So I think next year we're going to come back with all sorts of glory stories and testimonies of the goodness of God, you know, to the nations. The, the, <laughs> you know, the, the earth will be full of the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And we get to be part of it. We could have been born at any time in history. That's a but we're born at this time. Such a time wow. as this. Come on. It's awesome. It is awesome. And it's you such know? fun to see the it's Holy Spirit fun. move. Yeah. We didn't deserve it, so it's no use trying to deserve it. Let's just have fun with it, right? And release the kingdom. Patricia. You know, we, um, we, we, in the early days, we used to gather for prayer meetings and they, they were in different homes. Sometimes they were in our home when we used to live just five minutes from here. And, yeah. and they were so noisy. I can remember running around trying to close all the windows because I thought the neighbors would think there's a murder going on or something. And, uh, and one, of, one of those times, John, you just got so hit, he was like charging the wall, you know, just <laughs> taking the hill. It was just a wonderful, wonderful time. Do you remember that? Stretch your hands himself, toward him and which say, was another thing. It was like, wow. More. <laughs> Patricia. Come on. Yeah. I remember in the early days, I always sounded like a train. It was like, choo-choo. And I was like, oh, God, this is so embarrassing. What am I doing? And the Lord spoke to me on time. He says, you're going to be training people in the prophetic. So I'm like, choo-choo, choo-choo. Oh, -choo. bring it on. <laughs> Oh, I tell you, I just, you know, I'm just so privileged. I just want to honor this couple. Um, they have so pioneered even the whole area, yes, of revival and, you know, reformation, but in healing of the heart. And we are recipients of the healing of the heart message. I don't know where I would be without the message that they've championed around the world. And I would just say that, you know, that has been so life-changing is to say, here, God, here's my heart. 
you know, you can have it, but it's to see the healing happen. And I just, I just felt in my spirit tonight that the Lord is saying he's doing deep healing physically, but also in the heart, you know, in this conference. So I just want to bless what he does, what he reveals, what he removes. And it's worth it all because he's worth it all. And, uh, you know, I just felt like, you know, just run to him, but also run into the body of Christ because we need each other. And I tell you, I am, I'm just so grateful. She did counseling on me. 25 years ago, and then a few more after that. <laughs> How many know the, it's better to have the demons out than in? Yeah, okay, come on. So it's a year of jubilee, and it's a year of freedom! You know, um, John and Patricia are like sons and daughters to us as well, but she has a wonderful prophetic gift. and. And I said to her, Patricia, if you have a word for this conference, you know, just don't hesitate to bring it, you know. So, so I don't know if she, she does. <laughs> How many think, that was it. come on, Patricia, let's have a word here tonight. Oh, John, you're so funny. You know, I, I, I felt like, maybe this has been done already, I, but pastors in the house, can you just stand up? Pastors and leaders. I just want to bless what God is, is doing in you. And I just, all I hear is raw God. God is saying, go for him, go for him, go for him, go for raw God. You know, I just feel like the Lord is saying that he's coming with a glory level that we've never seen before. No disease known to men will stand against the level of glory that the Father is about to pour out. And it's just like he's wanting us to want him like he wants us. And I bless the Joshua's that stayed at the tent of meeting when the presence of God was so strong. Even everybody else went home, but that's the leadership that God is raising up. He's raising leadership that love his presence more than anything. So I feel like God is going to just wreck everybody. I just, my prayers for everybody. But I feel like pastors, you have a divine appointment with the Lord this week. And God is saying, raw God. And it's going to just multiply in your ministry. So I just want to bless you missionaries as well. God is, you know, what the Lord did for Heidi Baker on this carpet right here. He's, where are the missionaries? God is, uh, just real super quick, super quick, run up here if you're a full-time missionary. You're a missionary because I feel like God is going to do something like he did for Heidi Baker when he turned her upside down and her whole life upside down. If you're a full-time missionary, God, we just pray an outpouring of the spirit. The wind, the ruach, the breath of God is coming upon you. And the Lord is saying you will take nations for his glory. Take nations. Turn the nation upside down for the glory of God. So Father, I just pray for injections. Discouragement is coming off. Discouragement, discouragement is coming off. There's no place for discouragement in the place of hearing the Father's voice. So we just bless right now what the Lord is doing. Whoa! On these missionaries. And I, you know, John, the rest of John, my John's story was the Lord literally flipped him upside down. I don't know if you remember that. He was on his head. And the Lord said to him, <laughs> we were all laughing, but the Lord told him, he said, down with the mind and up with the spirit. Spirit. Down with the mind and up with the spirit. Now we need our minds, but it's like, it, what is God saying? What is God saying? What is God doing? What is God initiating? It's not so much what you can figure out. It's the spirit of God. So Lord, come, blow into the spirit. Whoa. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, Lord. Let's just bless these guys before they go anywhere. Fire on you right here. <laughs> and you as well, in Jesus' name. Fire on you. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Well, I'm looking down here and I'm seeing my dear friend, Bill Prankard. And uh, Bill, come on up and just say hello. How, how many of you were here when, uh, when Benny Hinn was ministering? Either Thursday or Friday or Monday, one of those days. Um, I, think it was, I think it was Friday he was... He was, he was remembering Bill Prankert, and uh, you know, if you can just imagine what it was like back in the, in the 70s, it yeah. was like in terms of the Holy Spirit moving powerfully, there was a little bit going on with full gospel businessmen, but it was pretty much, if you wanted to see miracles, you had to go to Catherine Coleman. Yeah. Yeah. Well then, Bill here, as a young pastor from the Ottawa Valley, was talked into going to a Catherine Coleman meeting. Yeah. And he was a little bit negative, actually. Is that right? I went to Is that fair to say? Yeah. You went, yeah, I went to criticize, yeah. <laughs> and and she, she came out in this flowing white gown with a spotlight on her and saying, 
Let no one see Catherine Kuhlman in this whole meeting, but only Jesus. And, and Bill said, well, I think I could help you with that. You know, if you get rid of the white dress, get rid of the spotlight, it might be helpful. Mm -hmm. But what happened to you there, Bill? Well, you know, here I am. I'm a Pentecostal pastor. And I was told she's not even Pentecostal. So, you know, what which could she have? I but I, I, I went with this group. And I'm just telling you, it's hard to criticize when you're being overwhelmed by Holy Spirit. Yeah. I really tried. I really tried. <laughs> I, I did. I tried so hard. Cause, cause, but uh, he's bigger. Yes. He's bigger. He's more powerful. And uh, he just wore me down. And um, when Catherine started ministering to people and people started falling all over the place, the Catholic lady beside me said, what's she doing to them? And I pat her because, see, she knew I was a Pentecostal pastor. So I knew everything, see, yes. And I knew I knew everything, so <laughs> even when I didn't. So I, I said, that's just the power of God. Well, she got so excited that she got healed. But when I said that, John and Carol, he came. Yeah. He wow. came. Holy Spirit came. And I realized in that moment that, you know, I had met him. I'd been introduced to him. He'd give me a gift, but I didn't know him. Right. And that's so Jesus said, you'll know him because he's going to live with you. And it was just like, okay, I've got that now. Let's, you know, yeah. go on. And yeah. he came, I felt his finger in my chest. And he said, yes, this is my power. And you've never seen it. You have had a form of godliness, but you've been denying the power. Well, I used to preach about those out there. Yeah, they, they had a form of godliness. I was Pentecostal. I mean, yeah, you, you know, they, and, and it, I started weeping and I repented and I, I, I repented because, you know, I never wanted to, I didn't know I was denying the power of God. I just thought it was normal not to ever see anything happen. And, and then I was weeping because I didn't know him. And I made a decision in that meeting in 1972, I will give the rest of my life to pursue you. And I'm still on the pursuit. And he's my best friend. And I'm having the time of my life. This is the best time that's ever been. And it's getting better. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, we, we were all very excited uh, when now within Canada, there was miracles happening when Bill Prankard came on the scene. And we, we went to many meetings. Uh, I tease him, you know, I said, yeah, I remember when I was a little boy going to Bill Prankard meetings. <laughs> of course, it's not true because I'm older than him, but anyway. So, so, now say that, say that again. Come on. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, I tell John all the time, he, he inspires us younger evangelists. <laughs> you know, we, we have a father in the faith here. <laughs> you know, we, we had a, a well-known lady. It was actually Brenda Kilpatrick who was here one time and saw us together and she said, is this your older brother? <laughs> so I've never let him forget that, you know. But anyway. That, that's um, what you heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bill, you, we, we, we became really good friends and, and Bill used to come here and lead many, many meetings for us yeah. uh, at the end of the 90s and on into the new millennium and so on. And we had one conference where we had Bill come in on the Tuesday night and do like a mm -hmm. healing meeting, mm -hmm. getting ready for the Wednesday start. Yeah. And, and there were some Irish people, yeah. remember that? Yeah. And, and they're sitting there, down here, some of them. I don't know if Irish you saw people. them. Yeah. We like Irish people. Yeah, <laughs> from Northern Ireland. And they, one, of their, one of the people they brought, almost against doctor's orders, yeah. who had yeah. seven strokes, was just dramatically healed. Actually, it was only five, but the doctor said five he would strokes. have more. So yeah. Oh, there were five. Oh, yeah. well, okay. He'd had five strokes. <laughs> Pardon me. Let's, let's not stretch the story. <laughs> and, uh, and it was just a remarkable healing, and all of his friends were just aghast yeah. at that. It was yeah. so powerful. Now, I, I remember that night because, um, you know, apparently they were sitting towards the back. I, we didn't know they were here, and uh, George McMurtry had, he wasn't able to work. I mean, you know, he was, he was basically an invalid, he had a brace to keep his leg straight so he could drag it, and two canes, and his arm was withered like this, and uh, 
five strokes he'd had, and, and so, you know, that's not really abundant living. No. no. That's not what Jesus paid for. No. And apparently, when I moved into healing, I said, if you need healing all over your body, put your hand on top of your head. Well, what he heard me say was put your left hand, well, his left hand, so he pushes it up like this, embraces himself, and he's not really having faith. George tells the story that, that he, um, he was a little irritated and just saying, Prankard, hurry up. And I said, somebody's hand is being healed. Well, that doesn't sound like a big deal, but when I said that, apparently his hand fell down. He just thought it had just lost grip, but it went straight down and his hand started moving and his friends here saw it. So they said, George, you know, you need to go up to the front. Mm -hmm. And so he started up the aisle and he got partway up, they're yelling at him. He forgot both of his canes right. and he couldn't walk without his canes. And, and now he's got a problem because the, the Velcro is releasing from his brace. And so he says, well, when I get up the front, I'll fix it. It's releasing because the leg that was about withered about half the size was full size. Yeah. You remember when I he did. got on the platform, he was absolutely totally healed. The doctor back home in Northern Ireland said, it's a miracle of God. Oh, yeah. And the reporter that reported it, put it in the Bangor newspaper, front page, Miracle Man, so impacted by that, that a few months later came back, gave her heart to Jesus. So, I mean, God's in the miracle business. He is he indeed. Is, he is, is indeed. Come on, where, where are you guys from Ireland? Just stand right up here from Bangor, Northern Ireland. Stand They're good up. friends. Yeah. And I think if I got this story right, you were the pastor of George McMurtry. Is that correct? He was one of the pastors yeah. in the church. Yeah. Why don't Bangor. you run up here real quick just so we can bless you. These are great folks. Yeah, yeah. Richard they are great and folks. Margaret. And yeah, I, just, you know, I got to say, this is an amazing place. We love this place because this has been a place for people to come from all over the world and continues to be, to be healed and refreshed and renewed. And isn't it, it is amazing. It is. <laughs> and it just keeps going and going. Margaret. <laughs> How is George doing now, Margaret? He's doing, he's doing very well. Is yes, he? we see him from time to time and he's just... It's just amazing, you know, when you he's see him. Amazing. He's totally oh, he's healed, and totally you were both healed. shocked when he got out of his seat and walked away. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. And when he came back to the church again, uh, we had a special meeting on the Thursday night uh, in Bangarilam, and he just ran down the aisle, and everybody stood up and cheered and jumped up and down. It was what, everybody knew how bad he was, Carl. You know, what See, was we amazing. didn't know how bad he was, oh, Bill. We just thought, well, he, he got some help, you know. Yeah. But no, during the service, he had to send for an ambulance miracle. to take him to hospital in the middle of the meeting. Yeah. You know, the exciting thing is that that was the beginning. Yeah. That launched George into a healing ministry. Right. Yeah. He yeah. goes all over the place, laying that hand on the sick and seeing them heal. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was totally amazing. Uh, George, I stood at his bedside a number of months before that, and we weren't sure he was going to survive. He had, had such a stroke. The doctors had warned his wife that he may not survive this. Uh, and I remember it was a big deal when he was first able to swallow again. He had lost the part to swallow. and uh, But he, he fought back, and we, we knew there was a healing school here, we've been here the previous September. We heard about the healing school, so we came back in February, and uh, George came with us, uh, and he was coming to learn about healing. He, he really wasn't expecting healing, uh, and was gloriously healed, wonderfully healed. And uh, we went back to the church, and the power of God just broke out in the church. It was amazing in the church. It was really, really wonderful. Wow. That is so it's cool. So amazing. Wonderful. It was a wonderful miracle, but you know. Many of us here in the room still need a miracle. But I want yeah. you to know how this man pressed into God. That's right. And he, he did. would not take no for an answer. Yeah. And against doctor's orders, he's like, no, he got, had to get special permission, I think, from, from the airline or something to, yeah. for them to bring him. He was that sick or that de uh, disabled. Yeah. And when he got there, it, it just, boom, just the power hit him because. Yeah. yeah. His, his, he pressed Ooh. into God in faith. And I want to encourage you all to do that. <laughs> it's getting thicker up here. <laughs> Fire on you, Margaret. Fire on you, Bill. Uh, more. Oh. 
How many need a yeah. miracle tonight? Why don't uh, you stand up? Well, I want to say two Lord. things. Number one, it is absolutely the will of God to heal you. Number two, his time is now. Yes, Lord. How do I know it's the will of God to heal you? Because Jesus healed everyone. And as Steve reminded us early, earlier, he never did one thing that was out of the will of God. Not one thing. Secondly, his time is now. Why? Because he is the great I am. Yeah. The ever-present one. So his time is now. So I want you to just say, Lord, I choose to believe. I believe for my healing now. Now reach up into heaven and by faith, like a little kid, put your hands up into that invisible realm of the Holy Spirit and realize the kingdom of heaven is within reach. And get that oily presence all over you. Lord, we just ask that your presence would come on their hands. Lord, let that tingling, that healing oil of your spirit just come right now. Oh, wow. And be, now we just begin to put it down, bring it down, and put it on wherever it is that you need healing. If you need it like George, all over, put it on the top of your head. Ah, oh, Father, we thank you for healings. We thank you for miracles, Lord. Ah, in Jesus' name. Lord, somebody's back just got healed. Oh. Wow. Oh, you've been in great pain. Ah, I think it's actually um, a sciatic as well. Uh, just move that around. God has just healed that. I also felt that somebody's hands were, um, I don't know whether they were, but they were really their knuckles. And I don't think it was arthritis. I think it was an accident or or something happened to your hand that it really doesn't work well and it really hurts. Just begin to move that hand right now. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Father, just continue. Check your bodies now. Move this way, that way. If you've uh, had a stroke as well, or a yeah. family member's had a stroke, they're yeah. not hopeless at all. That's right. George had had five, and he was instantly supernaturally healed. His, his leg that had atrophied just grew back out normal instantly. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. And so, Father, we bless your people right now to receive yeah. your healing. Say it like Steve taught us. This healing belongs to me because of what Jesus, Jesus has done. done. I receive my healing now. I receive my healing now. As a free gift of his love. As a free gift of his love. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh -huh. Now then, begin to do what you could not do. Just move it. If, you, if, you, if it wouldn't move, start to move it. Begin to take it right now and thank him for it. All over Lord. this room. We're just going to keep chipping Lord. away at this uh, all week long. Yeah. So if you feel like you're getting somewhere... Begin, wave your hand excitedly so we can see you. Something's going on. Something's happening to me. Yes, there. Yes, there. Um, who else? It's, yeah, back there. Come on. This is, this is awesome. Yes. Well, give the Lord a great big hand for that. Would you do that? Thank you, Lord. We're going to the announcements and bring them up. Okay. Wow. That is so great. Well... We're about to go live on uh, Daystar. We are. And so we're, we're going to have the Daystar singers come up in just a moment when they're, when they're ready. And by the way, they have loads of product in the, in the bookstore. And, and they'll be signing books, uh, book signing back there and, and so on after the meeting. And there's some new product coming online that you can pre-order back there but this is really really good anointed stuff and and i'm just thrilled that daystar has has come to canada and and brought the integrity of yes. the of this ministry you know years ago when we were doing a daily television show we were we were on daystar 
And quite frankly, it was costing us a fortune, Carol, you I know. know. <laughs> and so we thought, you know, well, we're going to take the internet option, and we just went um, in that direction. Mm -hmm. But they're here this week, and, and all, all of their television and everything that's going on in their truck out here in the broadcast and everything, they're, they're just taking the conference and no cost to us. They'll be putting it up. And tonight, uh, as it was last night and every night this week, it's going live around the world, world. from here. Woohoo! Uh, so yeah. be sure you support them and get their stuff and everything from the bookstore. And that will be absolutely amazing. All right. Yeah, we just really want to thank um, Marcus and Joni and their team. And we have the wonderful privilege tonight of having Marcus and Joni uh, here with us live. So this is going to be a really fun night, and we just are excited to have them. So we're just bless them. Okay. And, uh, you know, just Keep going. get expecting to... Uh, Seven minutes. Well, we oh, we've got yeah, time okay. for testimony. <laughs> we can have another, yeah. This is good. Well, we had a number of hands raised. If somebody here, he was way the, back. The, the, you were waving that God just did something for you. Where are you? Well, stand up and wave at me again. It's really hard to yes, see. Yes, I can see a hand in the dark back there. Yeah. Why don't you come on down here, I, sir, I believe, yes, and, and tell us what is, what's going on. Just run down here. Yeah, that a boy. Come on. Wow. When someone's just had a healing, they come sprinting down the aisle. It's a good thing, isn't it? Right. What's your name and where are you from? Um, my name's Keith Houghton. I'm from Collingwood. Collingwood. What's this happened, Keith? Um, August 21st last year, I had a total rupture of my uh, bicep, and everything went south here, and my bicep was up here. I had surgery. And it never did really. I got the scar now, but I have, sir, received my bicep back. Amazing. It oh, is. God. It's a miracle. Oh, Jesus. And it was when you said about the arm or hand, I can't remember. Wow. I was wanting, I was doing other things here, you know, because I have other ailments, but look at that. Look at that. Do you see that? That was not there when I came in to this <laughs> meeting. Look, at, it's bigger than my one that's not even, doesn't even have it. Uh, look at that. I'm telling you. You got your right arm back. I did. And I was... I mean, it, my hand had been tingling, and I'd lost about um, maybe, uh, I never did get more than 60% strength ever, all the physio, it just wasn't happening. And so it's been a year now. I'm a retired RN, I know the drill, knew the doctor that repaired it, said, Keith, this is gonna be, and when he told me it's gonna be Six months, and you'll probably never get full strength of that arm back. Come on, Jesus. Woohoo! It was nice to have my arm. You were happy to have your arm, yes. but your doctor forgot about the Jesus factor. <laughs> Let's stretch our hands toward wow. Keith right Thank here. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Isn't this great? You know, see, you think, eh, an arm was healed. Listen, if it's your arm, <sighs> it's a very, very big deal. Well, it is. So I want you to send the anointing up here and, and say, Lord, not just the arm, but whatever was going on in here as well. Fire on that belly right there. Who else had something happen to you just now? Wave at me. Wave excitedly. Come on. There was a number of hands. Okay, back here. Run up quick. I think we got about two minutes. Two minutes. Fire on you. Yeah. Woo. Can you jump up? What's this happen? 
Well, my story is not as exciting as his, but um, I had a, I, okay, I had a brain injury a number of years ago, and I know as you're speaking on healing, my vision got clear. So, vision got clear. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's give a warm welcome to the Daystar Singers, everybody. Yeah. Come on, bless you. The two minutes keeps becoming still two minutes. It's still two minutes. <laughs> Joni. We, we haven't uh, we haven't seen each other for several years now. You look amazing, actually. And I said, you and Carol do not age. It's the joy of the Lord for sure, isn't it? <laughs> Give a hand to to Joni Lamb right here. So what are you guys going to be singing about tonight? Well, you know, we were so blessed by the worship, the Day Star Singers guys. I saw Keisha getting Kleenexes, but. Laura, I believe is her name. What an amazing gift that she is. Her voice is so beautiful. I, I, told, um, I told one of the guys, one of our sound engineers, I said, I can hear her singing on some of the reflections that we do late at night on Daystar. It's beautiful music and scenery and verses. I can hear her voice on some of that. Do you think that bear witness with her spirit? So uh, I love that. I believe that could definitely happen. Okay, that would be, that would be amazing. And uh, we have Lou Engel here. Where are you, Lou? Come on up here real quick, would you? Just get ready off to the side. That'd be good. Because after they sing, I want you to all hear from Lou as well. But um, can you count us down, John, so we get this right? 30 seconds. Tell your friend, 30 seconds. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over to, uh, to you. Marcus is uh, back there getting ready to preach. And uh, 15. This is awesome, everyone. We're John and Carol Arnott, and we're here in Toronto at our amazing Catch the Fire conference. We're delighted to have Marcus and Joni Lamb with us, and, and uh, we just want to thank them and their team. Oh, it's, we? we sure do, and it's so exciting to have them here, not only just being televised, but live. And it's just absolutely incredible. Not only that, they're going around the world and we just want to thank them so, so much. I think it's fair to say Daystar is the largest Christian uh, television network really in the world right now, I believe. Is, am I right on that? They don't like to say that, by the way. <laughs> We're gr growing for the glory of God. And welcome to Canada. We're just so happy that these guys bought a station in Winnipeg, I believe. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just amazing. And so over well, to you. It's such an honor to be here with Pastors John and Carol Arnott. They literally are legends of revival, aren't they? Aren't you glad to be a part of this? Okay. Over to you. Okay. All right. You want to worship a little bit? Yeah. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. And we worship you tonight. We give you all the praise and all the glory for everything that's done. Everything went well. Thank you, I called Lou up and I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done that yet. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless 
worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, worship Your holy name. Come on, sir, tell me. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord.
What a wonderful, awesome presence in this place. Thank you, Father. Thank you for touching people's hearts. And yes, there are hearts here tonight that need that healing balm of Gilead applied. And just as this precious sister was talking about what God did in her heart, God's going to do in your heart today. And not only those that are here, but those who are watching my television. It's no accident that you're watching. I want you to keep watching and listen and just allow the Spirit of the Lord that's here to permeate through those cameras into that room where you're watching right now and allow the Spirit of God to touch you. And some of you are saying, I don't know what this is. These people, some of them are acting kind of crazy. Yes, that's true. We are a peculiar people. But I want to tell you something. God is going to touch you today. So just receive what he has for you. Do you believe that, those of you here? Do you believe the same Holy Spirit is going to touch those that are watching? Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to sing one more song before Marcus comes. and Just open up your heart, those of you that are watching at home and those of you that are in the building. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We don't take your presence for granted.
Let's give these Daystar singers a great big hand. A good big God bless you. Thank you, Joni, so much. That was absolutely amazing. And we're just contending for revival together. And you know, there's, there's a lot of people that are contending for revival right now. And, and see, we're already in it, okay? And it's happening all over the world. How many know? And yet we're contending for more. And one of the things Carol did is she called us all into like a, a fast for, I guess it's 40 days, but it started the 1st of September. And we're all fasting something like breakfast or video games or something. And we're contending for uh, God to move in an unprecedented way because North America needs revival people. And so does Europe, and so does the whole world. Well, we have a dear, dear friend who's here tonight, Lou Engel, who is contending for revival more than anyone I know on the face of the earth. And so, Lou, what a joy to have you in this house. Come on. He, he's got an event coming up in Los Angeles that I want him to tell us all about. 
And so you can take your seats, but fasten your seat belts, won't you? Lou, over to you. Thank you, John and Carol. I'm privileged to be with Marcus and Joni, the day star here tonight, and I'm privileged to be with John and Carol in 1996, right here in Toronto. In the, in the revival, I preached on the atomic power through prayer and fasting. I have a book in my hands called Atomic Power Through Prayer and Fasting. It was written in 1946, where waves of fasting exploded all over the world. And in 1947, the healing revivals broke out. I think it's a key. 1948, a group of people in, in Saskatchewan, North Battleford, were reading this book. And the grace of fasting rested on them three months, and the Holy Spirit and the latter rain was poured out. They said, we didn't even know there was such a thing as extended fasting and prayer. All the evangelists said it was the key, the master key to the impossible was, was power, atomic power through prayer and fasting. It's 70 years coming up. It's time for the breakthrough into another massive revival and healing revival. It was 110 years, 110 years ago, a black man named William Seymour came to Los Angeles united the body of Christ through the outpouring of the spirit the color line was washed away in the blood we need Jesus to heal our race divides and bring the unity of the body of Christ and William Seymour a hundred plus years ago declared that in a hundred years a revival far eclipsing Azusa Street will take place we're in that window right now believe the prophets and you'll succeed the call was born out of the Toronto Revival where hundreds of thousands have gathered in stadiums across the world praying and fasting for revival. Three years ago, these YWAMers came into my living room in Kansas City and they gave me a word and they said, there's a shift coming to the call and stadiums are going to be filled with the proclamation of the gospel, signs and wonders, and stadiums will be filled and Billy Graham's mantle is coming on the nation. It flipped me out a little bit. I'm praying. For two days, we seek God about this word. We're ending our time at the end of two, two days. As we're closing up, a prophet from Nashville calls my friend and said, do you know where Lou Engel is? Tell him I had a visitation last night. Tell him the Lord said there's coming a shift to the call. And it will not just be fasting and prayer, but it will be the proclamation of the gospel. Signs and wonders and stadiums will be filled. And Billy Graham's mantles coming on the nation. The very word that we have just received. I've been praying for three years, praying for Bonky, praying for others. It's time for America, North America, to, to be saved. And we were holding the call Berkeley last year. We were holding the, uh, holding the call Berkeley last year. A group of 70 kids were praying for 50 days straight, and we were praying and fasting. And the Lord spoke to me, call the leader of the Azusa Street Revival uh, organization and get reconciled him. We had had some kind of disagreement some time before. I didn't realize I'd heard him. I called him. I got reconciled to him. And he said, Lou, at the end of it, we had a great conversation. He said, Lou, the call Azusa Street is still waiting for you. It struck me. I'm praying. And the Holy Spirit says, says look up. April 9th, 2016, the 110th anniversary of Azusa. It's a Saturday. That was the word that came to me. I look it up, it's a Saturday. In other words, you could hold the call on that day on the 110th anniversary. So I'm praying, and I call my prophet friend of 30 years. I call him up and I said, hey, Chris, this is going on. And he said to me, do you remember my dream I had on our 40-day fast in 2013? I said, no. He said, in this dream, we were flying. In the dream, I received five sets of five plane tickets, and we could only fly united. I believe the body of Christ has got to unite in an hour of division. Only a united church can heal a divided nation. That's the only thing. We need to pray John 17 right now. So he, and I help me because I got a speed dial here. He, so he, in the dream, he didn't want to miss the tickets. He wanted to miss the flight. So he looks up when the expiration date was. The expiration date was 1,080 days. He wakes up out of the dream. He looks up 1,080 days. It's April 9th, 2016, the 110th anniversary of Azusa Street. I knew at that moment we needed to gather the body of Christ to do something. And then a gal from Washington called me and said I had a dream. I saw a stadium that was both a football field and a baseball field overlaid. She said the dream was so vivid. After the dream, I looked it up to see if there was any stadiums in America that was both the Super Bowl and the World Series. 
She said, only one in America, the Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles, where Billy Graham put 130,000 people in 1963. I dare to believe we're ended, coming into a day of Jesus the evangelist arising, healings, and mass evangelists. So it is burning in my heart. I'm praying about this stadium. On April 9th, a few months ago, 109th anniversary of Azusa, I went, to the, I went to the stadium with my team. The lady said, yes, this is the place where the first Super Bowl was played. And Vince Lombardi was the coach of the Green Bay Packers. That wouldn't mean anything to you, but it meant everything to me. Because 20 years ago, John Arn Arnott came to our meetings in Mott Auditorium, and the glory fell. And, it, and that night, right around that time, two 11-year-old girls were caught up into the heavenly realm from 12 to 4 at night in Mott Auditorium, and they saw the glory of God, Shay's daughters. They saw the glory of God, and they described, and I recorded for four hours as they described the angelic realm, and at one moment, suddenly they burst out in prophecy and begin to declare, Mott's too small, Mott's too small, stadiums will be filled, there's Vince Lombardi in heaven. I asked the kids, have you ever heard of Vince Lombardi? No, we never heard of him, but he's got a football helmet on in heaven. For 20 years I've been praying, is there coming a Super Bowl for the church? For 20 years I've been asking, why was Vince Lombardi in those dreams? I tell you, God is gonna fill stadiums with the harvest, with signs and wonders. And so, I, I don't have time to go into the, the, that part, but finally I came to the point where I had to make a decision. I had two people, three people on my staff. I have no money, and the Lord just spoke to me in my heart, Lou, you've got money. Matthew 13, when a man finds a treasure, he hides it in a field and sells everything that he has for joy to buy that field for that treasure. And the Lord spoke to me, I want you to sell your house and buy the field. I'm not boasting, my team said, I feel we need, you need to share this story. When I moved to Pasadena, I'd prayed, God, give me a sign if you want me to move to Pasadena by somebody buying me a house, because I can't afford it. A week later, a lady calls me and says, I know you're moving to California, I'm buying a house. It's a landmark, beautiful house. I said to my wife, I think we're to sell the house, buy the field, she said, yes, let's do it, Lou. Million plus. And I went to my kids and I said, this is your inheritance. So they said, ah, oh, dad, go for it. We have a spiritual inheritance. God will provide for us. Right after that, I walked into a restaurant and John Arnott was there. I hadn't seen him for years. And he said to me, he hardly, you hardly greeted me. Hello, Lou, by the field, by the field. By the field, he just kept saying, by the field. On April 9th, 2016, the 110th anniversary, we're trying to call all the body of Christ united. All the streams flow together. We're gonna to have 12 out, 10 hours of prayer, crying out for the third great awakening. And then the Bethel guys are rolling in. We're gonna do signs and wonders. We wanna to invite Toronto, because we came out of Toronto. We wanna to invite Randy Clark, Heidi Baker's coming, Todd White, but it's not about them. It's about us uniting together for another outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's time for stadium Christianity in the earth. I end with one dream, I end with one dream. Just a, a couple of months ago, I had a dream and I was calling for the call. It was another call, it was this one. And in the dream I was saying to someone, I'm not just excited about the young kids coming, I'm, about, I'm excited about those who have been after God for 20 years. And in the dream, I said, this is a Nazarite time. And old people began diving at the altar. And I remember in the dream, one gal was crying out, maybe a little younger than me, oh God, I remember when the fire fell 20 years ago, when I was a CNN reporter. I don't understand that, but I think it's going public. And then she begins crying out, send the fire again. 
Send the fire. It's 20 years since 1995. Stand with me. Would you just begin to lift your voices? Say, send the fire again. Go ahead. Send the fire again. Send the fire again. Send the fire again. Pour out your spirit. We pray William Seymour's prophecy of a revival far eclipsing Azusa. Make us one. Bring the black, the white, the Hispanic. Make us one. We ask in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord. Thank you. Let's just stretch forth our hands to this man and bless him abundantly. Lord, <laughs> I don't know how much more fire he can take, but give him some more in Jesus' name. Fire on you, Lou. Shaba. Oh, Lord God. And help him by that field, I pray, in Jesus' wonderful name. Woo! How many just changed their mind? I think revival's coming after all here. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we are really blessed and honored tonight to have Marcus Lamb with us. This fantastic couple and uh, their team are just spreading the good news of Jesus Christ all over the world. I mean, he was telling me in the green room that they have uh, uh, the only station in Israel broadcasting the gospel there, invited by the Israelis themselves, because they realize the only friends they have are evangelical Christians, and so they're looking for a, a ministry of, uh, you know, with, with, with longevity and with integrity that they can invite, and the story goes on and on. Let's stand to our feet and give Marcus Lem a wonderful welcome here to this platform in Toronto. In the name of Jesus, come on, give him a welcome here. This is great. God bless you, Marcus. And, uh, yeah. We pray for you. I'd hate to be the one following Lou Engel, but anyway, bless your heart. Well, thank you so much, Pastor John. You may be seated tonight. Hello, Daystar, watching all around the world. Call that prayer line. There's a great anointing that's here tonight. I'm going to be preaching on that very subject in, in just a moment. But uh, I see my Joni and my Re Rebecca I wish y'all would come over here. There's seats with your names on it. And I want to see your beautiful faces while I'm preaching. And uh, Rebecca is our youngest. We have three little lambs, and she's the littlest of the little lambs. I won't tell all of the dashing, handsome young men that she's single. I won't, I won't tell you that. And she is a senior at King's University, Dr. Jack Hayford's great school. And I'm glad that she's here. And I hope they got a picture of, of all of the lambs. Do we have a picture, Shannon, we can show of all of the, the lambs? Can we put that up on the screen? All right. In a moment, they will appear, I hope. Well, while we're waiting for them to appear, it may have to come all the way from Texas. Oh, look at there. All right, you see our blonde, that's Rachel. And uh, you know, Rebecca's on the end. And then our son, Jonathan, married a beautiful, exotic princess who was born and raised in India. And after they got together, look what the Lord did. That, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this name. I'm going to talk about prophetic. His name is Israel, Elisha Lamb. That's a lot to live up to. <laughs> and he has a baby sister who is scheduled for arrival in Dallas. I don't know what airline she's coming on, but... Uh, on her mother's airline, I guess, the, about the first week of November. So Joni and I are very excited about being grandparents. And I can hardly believe that John and Carol are great grandparents. Isn't that amazing? Let me just say to you that your pastors have shepherded revival 
in such an amazing way that it has touched people around the world. I've read about it, I've heard about it, I've watched videos, but as an evangelist, you may think of me as some TV person or TV executive, but I am an evangelist. I've never been a pastor, I've never been a teacher or anything else, an evangelist since I was 15 years old, so 42 years. And so for an evangelist, to get to come to catch the fire. I should be paying them to get to come. That's how great of uh, an honor that it is for me. And so thank you, Pastor John and Carol, for what you've done through these decades to promote revival. And they're still hungry for revival. They're still thirsty for revival. They still want the fire of God after all of these many years. And so I honor them and I bless them for that in the name of Jesus. Let me ask you a question. Has anybody seen Daystar Canada yet? Has anybody seen it? Wow, a bunch of you. Well, I want to put up on the screen how you can see it in the greater Toronto area. We're actually owned in 10 million homes across Canada and in the greater Toronto area. Write that down. That's how you can watch Daystar Canada. And of course, I'm so delighted that Bill Prankert is here, another mighty man of God. You know what? If I run out of things to say, there's all kind of people I could just pass the baton to tonight, from Lou Engle to Bill Prankert to Pastor John and many, many others. So can you believe that in 42 years of ministry, and I've preached in the greatest churches around the world, recently at Hillsong in Australia, in Singapore for Pastor Joseph Prince. In two weeks, I'll be back at uh, Lakewood Church for my seventh year in a row of preaching for my dear friend, Pastor Joel Osteen. Yet I have never preached in Canada until tonight. So I was thinking, well, God, there's a great anointing old Lou Engle, but I sure hope I still get to preach. I'd hate to leave Canada saying I still haven't preached in Canada. That would have broken my heart, but he would have done great. So let me just show you a little video about Daystar. Just before I share the Word of God, our staff put this together. Let's go to that right now. exclusive, high-quality, award-winning originals. 
Marcus and Jody. Intriguing guests, great music, good news. And we do it all live. I really thank you for the work that you're doing because you're so sincere. You've really changed my life. Reflections. Let prayer and meditation lead your journey. Gospel Music Showcase. We have some incredible talent lined up. The Green Room. Step inside the Green Room. For a personal look into the lives of our guests. Faith and Bill. Where we go behind the scenes to give you an inside look at movies worth watching. Joni Table Talk. Grab a seat and join the conversation. Millions of people are watching. People are in conversation. I love that Daystar is giving people, families, a healthy choice. Sending God's message of hope across the country and around the world. Glory to God. Entertaining, award-winning, diverse. One network changing the way faith-based television is viewed. Daystar. Experience it. Well, to God be all of the glory. Another way you can watch Daystar is through the Daystar app. Go to daystar.com forward slash app. It's a free app for your Apple device, your Android device. You can watch Daystar anywhere in the world, 24 hours a day for free on that app. Let me just tell you two quick testimonies that will bring such glory to God. You know, Jesus himself said that the greatest sign of his return, when the gospel, when the good news is declared in all of the world, then shall the end come. Last year during telethon time, a person called and pledged from Saudi Arabia and that's not what I'm trying to emphasize, but listen to the next part of it. They can't keep the satellite signal out, the, the Muslim government. And we have thousands of viewers in Saudi Arabia. But this viewer's told us something we'd never known before. For Pastor John, the viewer said, I live in the king's palace in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and Daystar is provided for us in the king's palace. The Muslim country of Saudi Arabia. And then about a year and a half ago, the country of Thailand contacted Daystar totally unsolicited. In other words, we had never tried to reach out to them. Obviously a Buddhist country. And they wrote a letter and said, Dear Daystar, we want to add you to our cable network across the nation of Thailand, will you please give us written permission? And oh, by the way, we're not gonna charge you anything. And so Daystar launched as the first and only Christian TV channel in the history of the Buddhist country of Thailand. Jesus is coming soon. I said I was only gonna tell you two, so, but Lord, can I tell them another one? A while back, a Muslim young lady sent us a letter from Tehran, Iran. And she said, Dear Marcus and Joni, I am not a Christian, I am a Muslim, but I watch Daystar often, and I want to purchase a DVD of one of the programs that you produced recently because I want to share it with my fellow university students in Tehran, Iran. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is coming soon, and that's why we need the anointing and the power of God. So if you've just tuned in by way of television through Daystar, going into every state in America, every province of Canada, every country of the world. We are live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada at Catch the Fire under the leadership of Pastors John and Carol Arnott. In the interest of time, I'm not even gonna ask you to turn for the text, just listen to it. 
John chapter 20, verse 22, a verse that is seldom ever talked about and especially virtually never preached about. And Jesus breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. What is that telling us? It is a clear example of the anointing being transferred. Transferred from Jesus, he breathed on the people, the anointing fell on the people, and they received the power of the Holy Spirit. So when I was praying about this invitation, the Lord spoke to me and said, for catch the fire, preach on the subject, the anointing is transferable. The anointing is transferable. Daystar was built on the anointing. What is the anointing? It's the enabling, empowering touch of God to be able to do something that you could not do in the natural, but only through the supernatural. First John 2, 27 says, and this anointing that you have received of him teacheth you all things. The anointing is tangible. You can feel it. Bill Prankard, when you hear people talking about the glory of God, the glory of God is the tangible presence of God. The Hebrew word for glory is kabod, which means the weightiness of God. I've heard people describe it, Joni's described it before, when that glory comes, it's like God puts a coat or a cloak around your shoulders. You can not only sense it, but you can feel it. But not every church is blessed like catch the fire. Not every church is hungry and thirsty for the anointing and the power of God and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I went to one church one time and right before we got to the, uh, the building as we were leaving the pastor's house, he looked over at me and said, well, let's go get it over with. I went to another great church, a large church, and uh, I was just there for Sunday morning. A revival broke out, and he said, I want you to stay all next week. So it was Sunday night, and I went out in the hallway to get a drink of water. And when I did, I saw the pastor leaving. And I won't call his name because, you know, you're on television. That probably wouldn't be cool to do that. But uh, I said, Pastor Blank, uh, where are you going? He said, well, I'm an old man. I need to go home and get my sleep. And besides, I trust you. You go ahead and obey the Lord. So I was at a church like this in Southern California. I'm going to tell you all the details so you'll know it's not a made-up preacher story. This is a true story. It was January of 1978, and the church had just undergone a pastor change. They got a new pastor. Loved the old pastor. They weren't too thrilled about this new pastor. So they would look at me every night of the revival. I mean, like they were mad at me. I didn't have anything to do with getting rid of their old pastor or bringing the new pastor in. So I'd been preaching like a house of fire, trying to get them to worship, trying to get them to praise, trying to get them to pray, trying to get them to the altar. And I was about to backslide being at that church. It was so bad. I needed to send the whole bunch up to Toronto. <laughs> so I've been there Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. Where was I now preaching? Southern California. Somebody say Southern California. Well, on Sunday morning, there is an electric guitar. Now, I was raised in Georgia, and I live in Texas, and normally I would say guitar, but I'm trying to show you I'm educated. <laughs> so it was an electric guitar, and uh, the electric guitar was in the way, and back in 1978, we didn't have this wondrous technology of wireless microphones. So we had the long cords, and many times those cords would get tangled up. Is that right, Pastor John? So the cord is getting tangled up in the electric guitar. 
Don't talk like a bunch of Southerners and say guitar, say guitar. And I reached down to put, to pick up that guitar. And where was I now? Southern California. This group pays a good tension here in, in, in Canada. So I reached down to grab the guitar to move it out of my way. I mean, I didn't even break stride. I didn't interrupt what I was preaching. I was still just a preacher and reached down there to grab that, my, that, that uh, guitar. And when I did, I felt something. And buddy, I started screaming. I said, ah! Well, people thought it was the anointing. And somebody jumped up and started running the aisle. Others started standing and lifting their hands and praising the Lord. And then Pastor Steve, I had a moral dilemma. I mean, am I gonna tell them that the, the guitar had a short in it and the little Lamb of God almost got electrocuted? Well, the electricity was transferable. And the anointing is transferable. So let's walk down through the pages of God's Word today and see what the Bible says about the anointing being transferable. In Exodus 4, 17, God said to Moses, take the rod of God and use it to perform signs and wonders. In Exodus 7, 11 and 12, as Pharaoh had seen the rod of God in demonstration through Moses and through Aaron, he gathered his magicians and they tried to mimic the anointing. There's a lot of people trying to mimic the anointing. The anointing is not how loud or how fast you preach or some kind of emotional response to it. The anointing changes lives. The anointing lasts, a track record of 20 something years of this revival. The anointing is real. It can't be duplicated, it can't be substi uh, substituted, and it can't be successfully mimicked. So the Egyptian magicians of Pharaoh would throw their rods down and they would turn into snakes. But oh, look what the real anointing did. Woo! The Bible said that the rod of Aaron swallowed up the rods of all the Egyptian magicians. Somebody say praise the Lord. In Exodus 8, 5 and 6, God said, Moses tell Aaron to stretch forth his rod over the waters of Egypt to bring forth the frogs. Now, I don't know about you, uh, Lou Engle, but I don't want to have a frog anointing. <laughs> it was a frog anointing. He stretched forth the rod and thousands of frogs started coming out of the rivers, the lakes, the streams, and the ponds. In Exodus 9, 23, and Moses pointed his rod to heaven. And from the heavens came thunder and hail and fire and fell on the Egyptians. In Exodus 37, 29, it says, and you shall make a holy anointing oil. You see, the, the anointing was transferred through the rod of Moses and the rod of Aaron. And the anointing is transferred through anointing oil. The oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And I love the great story in 1 Samuel 16 and 13. And God said to Samuel the prophet, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. And, David took, and Samuel took a horn of oil and poured it on David. After six or seven of his brothers had been rejected by God, God chose the youngest, God chose the smallest. The Bible said he might even had red hair and freckles, the one least likely to seed to succeed. But he was the one, Lou Engle, doing what you've talked about for years. He was on the backside of the desert, fasting and praying, seeking God, writing the song, singing the high praises of God, and being faithful to his father to do the work his father had told him to do. 
And because of that, the Bible says, and the anointing was upon David from that day forward. Why? Because the anointing is transferable. Well, I was preaching. Rebecca, you've never heard me tell that, this story. That's why I wanted you to come over here. This is going to be better than in any of your classes at King's University. Not that they're not good. They're great. But they don't tell stories like the one I'm about to tell. 1979, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm single. I haven't met J Joni yet, so I probably needed a lot of prayer. Anyway, I'm preaching a revival, and revival broke out, and it was going on for two weeks, and I talked about the anointing, and one night in the middle of the revival, this guy came up to me with the biggest bottle of olive oil. I've never seen a bottle this big in any grocery store. And he said, Brother Lamb, I have a special request. And I said, what is your request, sir? He said, I want you to anoint me with this oil. I thought, all right, I'll be glad to do it. But he said, but wait just a minute. I don't want a little dab will do you. I want you to open this bottle and pour the whole bottle all over me. I thought, my God, I got more sense than that. The pastor will run me out of town on a rail because I'll mess up that pretty carpet if I do that. But you know what? Finally, the pastor came around and he said, "Go, just go for it. Just go ahead and do it. I mean, I felt like a dummy doing it at first until I saw the glory of God manifest on this young man. And especially later when I heard how God had delivered and set him free from years of chronic bondages. The anointing is transferable. James 5, 14 and 15, is there any sick among you? Then let him call for the elders of the church and let them anoint them with all in the name of the Lord and pray the prayer of faith. And if they have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. The anointing as the church prays, people are healed. Just like we saw in the beginning of this service. In Joshua 6 and 20, Joshua instructed the musicians, thank God for anointed musicians. And the trumpeters lifted up their voice and blew the trumpet and sounded aloud. The scripture says that when the people heard it, they gave a loud shout. And when the loud shout took place, the vibration of anointed praise and worship and music touched those concrete walls of the city of Jericho. And the walls came tumbling down. Why? Because the anointing is transferable. In 1 Samuel 16, 23, and David took a harp and played it, and the evil spirit departed from King Saul. And the scripture says he was healed and made refreshed. Why? Because an anointed musician played under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and the anointing went through the airwaves and touched King Saul and delivered him. You want to get rid of the devil? You want to get the bad spirits out of the house? Put on some anointed worship. Begin to praise God. And if you don't have a harp, you can take these five strings here and five strings here and clap them together and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And the evil spirit will have to leave and you will be healed and you will be made refreshed. Another story that my precious Rebecca's never heard. When I was 12 years old, and of course Papa and Mimi had insisted as a young boy that I take piano lessons. And I didn't want to do it, I'll be honest. I wasn't the anointed man of God back then. <laughs> At, at, as at six or seven years old and after I'd taken lessons for several years I played the organ in the church and uh, one sur Sunday morning who knows why I guess it was the anointing I just started playing there was a pause in the service and I just started playing a solo all by myself on that organ and the Lord led me to play the song, The Old Rugged Cross. There was no singing. 
There were no other musical instruments. I was on this side of the church, Rebecca. And after the verse had been played and then midway to the chorus, the Holy Spirit started walking up and down the aisles of my little home church in Macon, Georgia, and began to tug at people's heartstrings. And more than a dozen people got up and came to the altar and gave their heart to the Lord. There wasn't anybody preaching. There wasn't an altar invitation extended, but the Spirit of God, the anointing was transferred as that organ was played. Played. I'm telling you, the power of God can transfer through the airwaves tonight on Daystar around the world, wherever you are, in your home, on your job, in that hotel room, in that jail cell. The power of God can go through that television set or through that computer or that smartphone, and he can touch you right there where you are. Call that number if you're feeling the power of God. In 1 Chronicles chapter 20, you quoted 20 and 20. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Well, just two verses later, God said to King Jehoshaphat, they had been losing the battle. They had multiple countries arrayed against them. God said, your strategy is not working. You need to change strategies. So he gave him an instruction, an anointed instruction. And he said, put Judah in the forefront of the battle. In other words, send Judah first, and the victory will be won. You know why? Because Judah means praise. And when you go forth praising God and worshiping God, the Bible said in Psalms 22 and 3, O thou who inhabits or dwells in the praise of your people. When you begin to praise God with a sincere heart, God himself will come down from the heavens, and he'll dwell where you are and where the spirit of the Lord is second Corinthians 3 17 there is victory and the enemies of Judah and of Israel begin to fight against one another and Jehoshaphat's men didn't even have to raise a hand in order to win why because the anointing was transferable Here's another neat little story. First Kings 19 and 19. Elijah, the prophet, was walking by one day and he saw a young boy, young man in a field. He was plowing. And the Bible says that he took his mantle and he threw it on Elisha. And when the, that mantle came on Elisha, he was called into the ministry. That's where we get that little saying sometimes, it's better caught than taught. He caught the anointing. He caught the mantle of God. And immediately he left behind his parents, his home, his job, and said, I'm going to follow the man of God, and I'm going to go into the ministry. Why? Because the anointing was transferable. 2 Kings 2 and 8, after Elijah had been called up in a whirlwind and the chariot of fire, Elisha had already petitioned Elijah, and he said, I pray thee when you leave, get granted to me a double portion of the anointing, a double dose of the Holy Ghost. And it looked like that prayer had not been answered, but all of a sudden, as Elisha looked up to the heavens and said, oh man of God, remember your promise. And Elijah threw that mantle out over that chariot of fire. And Elisha picked it up. Now it didn't have any instructions written in it. So he thought, all right, how am I going to use this thing? And he goes over to the Jordan River. And it's interesting, Becca, there were 50 Bible school students on the other side of the river. And they thought they were all of that and a bag of chips because they were in Bible school. And they looked at disdain at Elisha and thought, who are you, Elisha? You don't have any ministerial credentials. You haven't graduated. You don't have a degree. But all of a sudden, Elisha cries out and says, where 
says, the Lord God of Elijah. And the scripture says he took that mantle and he struck the waters. And when he did, the Bible says the Jordan River parted and Elisha walked over on dry ground. I bet every one of those Bible school students, their mouths just dropped open. Just like that. The anointing is transferable. December 1996, I had heard about the Pensacola Revival. My Joni had been to it. Many of my friends had been to it. We had uh, just gotten on the air in Dallas with our Dallas station, had been on the air about um, three years. So I go to the Revival and I'm there with my friend, Pastor Jensen Franklin. Many of you may know Pastor Jensen Franklin. We've been friends since we were in our 20s. So I go the first night of the revival, and I think, yeah, they're going to call me out. I'm a preacher. I'm a minister. I'm going to get called out. Well, they don't even know who I am. They don't call me out. Nobody prays for me. And the way they did it back then, they would say, now, don't follow the preacher around. Don't follow the pastor. Don't follow the evangelist. So I was trying to be obedient. Second night, I thought I'm sitting in a different part of this church tonight. That was just a dead spot where I was the night before. I'm going to get me a hot spot. I'm going to get an alive spot. So I sit in that spot and I try to look as conspicuous as I can. <laughs> Carol, I try to be as worshipful as I can, as positive, smiling, paying attention to the preacher. Nothing. They don't even look at me. And they said, don't follow them around. I thought, well, I'm not going to follow them around, but I'm going to move around. So during the altar, I, I was over there, and I was back there, and I was up here, and I was over there. I was crawling over bodies, people who were out under the power. And I would just go and stand close to them, thinking, all right, they're going to see me now, and they're going to pray for me. Nothing. Well, the next night was my final night to be there. I did everything. I broke every rule. I followed the pastor around. I followed the evangelist around. Not one of them. I mean, they acted like I had the plague. And the services were going late, and it had gotten to where it was close to midnight. And I looked around, and I didn't see Evangelist Steve Hill anywhere. And one of the musicians there was a friend of mine and Joni's, Mark Coleman. And I saw Mark, and I said, Mark, this is my last night. I came all the way from Dallas to Pensacola, Florida to get prayed for, for the anointing. Where did the evangelist go? He just grinned, and he said, follow me. And so they did a trick. Remember I told you they didn't have wireless microphones years ago? Well, they had them during the Pensacola Revival. And so the, the evangelist, he was getting ready to leave. He, had, he was walking down the hallway, uh, and people can't see him. He's still saying, fire, fire, fresh touch, receive. And you're thinking he's still in the building somewhere. <laughs> and I followed Mark. And Steve Hill had gotten into his van. He was on the back side of the church where nobody could see him. The rain was starting to fall, and it's about to be midnight. And I'm thinking, I came all the way from Texas to get prayed for. So I was standing behind him, and I, de I determined, I'm either going to get prayed for or run over one or the other. So, <laughs> thankfully, he saw me, and uh, he didn't get out and get a bottle of oil or so. Let's go back into the sanctuary where the revival fires are falling. No, he didn't do any of that. He just rolled the window down on his light blue minivan, and he just barely touched me, and at least he knew who it was. He said, Lord, the brother from from Dallas. He, he knew that much. Touch him, Lord, by the power of God. And that was it. And on he went to wherever he was going at midnight. Well, it didn't seem like anything had happened. I couldn't tell anything had happened. But then the first Sunday of 1997, I was invited to speak at a church that seated 5,000 people in Dallas, Texas. And I told the people 
over the air, over our, our Channel 29. We weren't even day started then. We just had the Dallas station. I said, I'm going to tell Sunday night at Calvary Temple about how I went into a trance for two hours on live television. So when we showed up to that church, the pastor and I walked out on the stage. The pastor was shocked because the building was full, including the balcony, on a Sunday night. The Spirit of God moved in such a great way, and that night over 200 received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And for 17 weeks, Joni and I were there in revival, and there were 4,243 signed decision cards of salvation. And somebody sent me a note from back then, and this is what they were had kept up with some of the statistics. And they said, during that revival, Satanists were saved, homosexuals del delivered, drug addicts, prostitutes, alcoholics, Jehovah's Witnesses, Buddhists, Mormons, healings and miracles, blind people saw and deaf people heard. I'm telling you, the anointing is transferable. Psalms 107 and 20. So then he sent his word and it healed them and delivered them from their destructions. When you hear the life-giving word of God, it has its own anointing on it. When God called me to preach, I wasn't uh, the son of a preacher. My grandfather wasn't a preacher. I said, God, I don't know what to preach about. He said, memorize my word. Because he said, even when you're not anointed, my word will always be anointed. There's an anointing on the word there's a power on the word there's a blessing on the word there's a promise on the word and when the word goes forth in power it's tangible and it'll touch you and it'll make a great impact Matthew 8 and 5 15 Jesus touched the hand of the mother-in-law of Peter who was at death's door the Lord raised her up and she was healed in fact she was healed so good ladies listen to this she got up off of her deathbed and made supper for them. But that's pretty good evidence that she got healed because the anointing was transferable. Mark 5 and 30, the woman with the issue of blood, and I'm going to have to cut out some of this because of time because I want to pray before we go off the air live. The woman with the issue of blood, she had something like a blood cancer for 12 years. But she made up in her mind, she determined in her heart, and she said within herself, if I may but just touch him, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be made whole. Notice she didn't say, if I can just get Jesus to touch me, if I can get Jesus to call me out or speak a word of prophecy or give out a message in tongues over me or interpret my dream, then I'll be healed. No, sir. She said, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to touch him. I'm going to make a demand on the anointing. I'm going to cause God to react to me instead of me waiting to react to God. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get that mindset and you say, I am going to cause God to react to me, my faith, my prayer, my worship, my giving, my persistence, then God is going to touch you. Notice what Jesus said. He said, who touched me? Yet there were hundreds of people all around him wanting him to touch them. And the disciples said, Lord, why would you say who touched you? There are hundreds touching you. But Jesus said this was a different kind of touch because he said, I felt virtue. That word virtue means power or anointing. I felt virtue leave my body. You see, the woman with the issue of blood, she made a withdrawal from the heavenly bank. Hallelujah. Why? Because the anointing is trans. For a ball. 1994, I alluded to the trance. I won't go into that. That's another story for another day. But I was in a trance for two hours from midnight till about two o'clock in the morning. God began to wake up people all across Dallas, Fort Worth, and have them turn on their TV sets. Have anybody ever heard of the Jonas Brothers, the great singing group? Well, the dad of the Jonas Brothers, his name is Kevin Jonas, he told me this story personally. He said, I was asleep 
I got woke up and I felt prompted by the Holy Spirit to turn on to channel 29. It was 1.30 in the morning. And he said, I saw in amazement as you were there in that trance. You couldn't even tell you were moving or breathing or that you were alive. He said, like a lightning bolt from heaven came through that TV set and hit me. And I was slain in the spirit right there in the family room of our house in Dallas, Texas. Why? The anointing is transferable. <laughs> Hallelujah. Years ago, I heard this story. You probably have heard it, but it doesn't get to hear it. It was a story during the height of the Toronto revival. A pastor, a Southern Baptist pastor from America, the board of his church had heard about this revival. And they said, Pastor, we want you to go investigate it. We want you to go check it out. And we're going to pay for the... So they said tonight, he would come to the services. But of course, he had been trained to not believe that the gifts of the Spirit are for today. He had been trained to believe in cessation, that the gifts have ceased. And for a whole week... The boy thing happened to you yet? No. And finally he left. Seemingly nothing had happened. But then on Sunday morning, knowing that most of his church knew where he had been and what he had been doing, he thought, I need to give them a report. And Pastor John and Carol, as he a portal of religion and started telling him what he had seen and what he had heard. The power of God fell in that Baptist church and over half of them were slain in the spirit and baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Why? Because the anointing is transferable. I want you to stand on your feet all over this building tonight. I want you to lift your hands like light lightning rods to heaven. I want you to begin to bombard heaven with praise because the praises of God will bring the anointing of God upon your life. I want the musicians to come to these instruments. I sense the power of God here in a great and mighty way. Acts 4, 30 and 31, by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done in the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Boldness. Will the musicians come please? Acts 5, 15, Peter's shadow fell across the blind and the blind would see. In Acts chapter 19, handkerchiefs and aprons from the body of the apostle Paul, what we today call prayer cloths, would be laid on those that were afflicted. They were delivered and set free by the power of God. Romans 1 and 11, Paul wrote to the Romans and said, I desire to come to Rome that I might impart a spiritual gift unto you. How could he do it? if the anointing wasn't transferable. 2 Timothy 1 and 6, but stir up the gifts of the Holy Spirit that have come to you by the laying on of hands. You see, the apostles had laid hands on the people and they had received the different gifts of the Holy Spirit, the nine supernatural gifts. I believe tonight God sent me on a mission to Toronto, Ontario, Canada, to remind you, you know, I felt like, God, why would you have me preach this to these people? That's preaching to the choir. They all know it, they love it, they believe it, and they practice it, and they bought the T-shirts. <laughs> but Jesus said, and again I say unto you, and again I say unto you, Remember when he would say, verily, verily, I say unto you, truly, truly, God wants to remind you of your roots. 
He wants to remind you of where you came from. He wants to remind you where he's called you from and where he's called you to. And ladies and gentlemen, there's getting ready to be one more wave, one more outpouring, one more power of God to fall on this land just before Jesus comes back. I know television, Christian television, has its warts and its wrinkles and its bruises and its scars. But it's still the best way to be able to highlight revival and let people know all over the world what God is doing and to see the power of God in demonstration. We've got about 10 minutes left in this broadcast. We're going to pray. I remember my Uncle Charles, who was a pastor of a little church. He'd get down between the pews, and I'd hear him say, God, I'm going to ring the prayer bells of heaven. I didn't have any idea, Bill Pranker, what he was talking about. Then he, he must have rung him, Lou Engel, because then I'd hear him say, I feel the glory of God running up and down the avenues of my soul. Woo! I was just a little fella, but I knew Uncle Charles had touched heaven and that heaven had responded and touched him back. You and I at the Great Catch the Fire Church and Conference in Toronto, we can ring the prayer bells of heaven tonight. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven. I will heal their land and forgive their sin. America needs revival. Canada needs revival. The world needs a revival. And let me tell you, God's up to something. I didn't even tell you this, but I got an email today in route to Toronto. The largest multi-channel TV company in France. Now, the France don't like America. They don't like Americans. And I certainly hadn't heard of too many charismatic Pentecostals in France, but guess what? The decision maker decided today, we are gonna add Daystar to five and a half million homes of our TV system all across the whole of France. God is sending revival. He's pouring out his spirit and he wants to use you. The last thing I wrote in my notes, let me read it. The last thing I wrote down here. Come here, Rebecca. Come here. Hurry. Jump over there with your long legs. You didn't get them long legs from me. You got them from your mother. What's that say? Purpose. Purpose. That's the last thing I wrote down there. Purpose. What is the purpose of the anointing being transferable? You see, if it's transferable, God didn't, God doesn't just transfer it to you to hoard it to yourself. Oh, that's why that prayer says, that verse says, pray ye one for another that you may be healed. When you focus on others, when you, when you put your attention on others, when you reach out to others. Listen, I know revival's been going on here for a long time, but let's say it's Tuesday morning, a month from now, there's no conference and a demon-possessed person comes to the uh, front door of Catch the Fire and says, is that our not fella here? Is he our not here? And they say, no, he's not. And he begins to say, I'm in desperate need. Ladies and gentlemen, the receptionist, the caretaker, Whoever tends, cuts the grass, whoever cleans the toilets, if they've been touched by the fire of revival, they can pray the prayer of faith and that demon-possessed man can be delivered and set free and changed by the power of God. That's the purpose of the anointing being transferable. Pastor John Arnott, come up here quickly. I want you to pray a prayer and release the anointing across the airwaves. Get on the phone. Get on 
your computer, todaystar.com, and send in your prayer request. This legendary leader of revival, this father of revival, is going to pray and release the fire and the power of God, and you can receive it right where you are. Oh, let's join hands and come into agreement all across this room right here. Lord, we put our faith in the anointing. We put our faith in the transferable anointing of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we say again, nothing stops the Holy Spirit, nothing. And I ask you to pour out upon all of these, those in this room, those that are watching us right now, those around the world in the various nations and those in prisons and those in homes and those in schools, wherever they are, Holy Spirit, right now, come and meet the cry of those hearts in the name of Jesus. Let your fiery presence burn upon us all right here. We cry out to you, Lord. We, we need you. We are desperate for revival. We have to have more. Lord, we're contending for a greater wave and release of your presence and your power. Pour out your spirit on all flesh as you have promised in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, as we reach out to you and touch heaven, miracles of healing happen all over. People are being healed in their spine, nerve damage being healed, eyesight being healed. Oh Lord, blood conditions being healed, skin conditions being healed all over the world right now. The fiery presence of God defeating and undoing the works of darkness in the lives of multitudes. Thank you for your amazing goodness and grace. Now I must obey the Lord. I want pastors to stay here with me. I'm going to have every person that is called into the ministry and your spouse. If you can, I don't know how we'll do it. We're going to do our best. I want to pray for all of you tonight. If you're called into the ministry and your spouse, get up here. And if you are a minister or the spouse of a minister watching live on day star my heart is for you today god said i want to rekindle the fire in your life you've been concerned that your people would not be receptive but god said i will do a work that they will not be able to understand, but they will know that it is I, the Lord God, in the midst of them. So be not afraid. Put your trust in me, my son, for I will touch you afresh and anew. I will do a great work in your life, greater than I have ever done before. Fast and pray. Seek my face. Call on my name. Do not be ashamed of revival. Do not be ashamed of the Holy Spirit, but make the Holy Spirit prominent in your services and I will show up and I will show out and I will show myself to be the mighty God oh man and woman of God receive that word receive that word receive that word now I'm going to pray for some of you but it doesn't matter if I do or not because you're under the anointing you're under the anointing you saw this tonight about Daystar Daystar is on in every city in America, every city in Canada. We're on in every country of the world. And Daystar is totally out of debt. In fact, Daystar is so blessed. Listen to this. One of the most prominent churches in the world, just a few years ago, Daystar loaned them $20 million. And they've already paid it back. They paid it back in less than three years. You can't loan $20 million if you don't have $20 million. Every year, Daystar gives double-digit millions to others. So we ask people to give. We practice what we preach, and that's why we're so blessed. Why has all this happened? The anointing, the anointing, the anointing. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. 
These two things will work for you in your ministry. They'll work in your outreach, in your missions efforts, in your church, in your evangelistic crusades, whatever it is that you're doing. If you will allow the Holy Spirit to rise up big within you, then he will do the work. Stretch your hand towards the Lord. And just like, like you're putting your hand in that nail-scarred hand, Think about that verse that says, no man can pluck you out of my hand. Why could the Lord say that? Because you're sealed by the blood of Jesus. That nail-scarred hand, as you take that nail-scarred hand, no one can pluck you out of his hand because they can't cross the bloodline. Now say, God, here I am. Here's my heart. Here's my soul. Here's my mind. Here's my life. Here's my spirit, my time, my talent, my energy, my ability, my inability. Lord, take me and use me. Take me and make something great out of me. And help me to be found faithful, Lord, in the little. You see, you can't get promoted to the lot until you're faithful in the little. And then the faithful in the more. And then God will add to it more and more. Lord, here I am. Whatever it is. Lord, if you want me to, to cut the grass at the church. If you want me to clean out the toilets. If you want me to teach a five-year-old little boy Sunday school class. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm willing. Here I am. But anoint me to do it. You know what little Marcus and Joni started out? Neither one of our parents were preachers. We didn't even know one another. I was raised in Georgia. She was raised in South Carolina. Her first ministry was on the bus ministry. My first ministry was on the bus ministry. That's not a very uh, exciting, glamorous ministry. But God saw as we were young, we were willing to do that. We were faithful in that. We did the very best we could in doing that. And look what else God has done. The first time I ever preached to human beings, it was in a nursing home. I didn't get paid to do that. And now who knows what kind of results I may have even had, but I was faithful to start where I could. The first time I preached in a church, it was a single wide trailer. Single wide, I guess it was a 12 foot wide, 10 foot wide trailer. There may have been 12 people. I don't even know if I had as many people as Jesus did. He had 12 disciples. I think there was probably about eight and two of them was my mom and dad. But start where you are. Be faithful. Be faithful. God's looking at your hearts. And God is saying, if I can find a faithful heart, then I can take them and I can make them and I can multiply them and I can do great things with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reach over and gently lay your hand beside you and pray for them. Pray with empathy. What does that mean? That means with feeling. In other words, pray for them like they're going through either what you're going through or what you've been through. Pray with empathy. Pray with concern. Pray with love. Pray with compassion. Lord, minister to my brother. Minister to my sister. Minister healing to them. Hallelujah. I'm feeling an increase of the anointing in this building tonight. The anointing level is rising in this place. Receive in Jesus' name. Receive in Jesus' name. Receive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you to listen to me. I told you I've been preaching since I was 15, 42 years. For the Lord just spoke something to me that I have never, he's never said this to me. I've never spoken this in a church service i've never said it over people before but i'm hearing and it doesn't matter if it's even but just one jesus left the 90 and 9 to go after the one but the lord said to me there's some of you tonight 
that are in the ministry are called to the ministry that are discouraged. You're sincere, you love the Lord, you love people, but you've been hurt. Somebody's lied to you, somebody's lied about you. And you have worked and worked and worked till you feel like, God, I've just given all my money, all my time, all my energy. I feel wore out. I feel burnt out. I feel used up. And I don't feel like I have anything else to give. That's why we need the transference of the anointing. Because there's a lot of people around here that are walking in a fullness of the Spirit. And you can receive that tonight. You can be healed. And that's the other thing I'm hearing the Lord saying. I am going to heal those hurts and those wounds. And I am going to cancel the lies of your adversary, Satan who's trying to discourage you, who's reminded you of every mistake you've ever made, who keeps bringing up your past. The guy, the Lord, thy God, saying to you, I am here to heal and to redeem and to renew. He's going to do heart transplant surgery on somebody tonight because he said, I'll take out the stony heart and I will replace it with the heart of flesh. God can cause you to be vibrant. God can cause you to have joy. God can cause you to wake up in the morning instead of saying, good Lord, it's morning. You'll smile and say, good morning, Lord. And you'll say, watch out, devil. I'm going to cross over Jordan today. I'm going out and invade your territory. I'm going to be used by God. I'm going to bless somebody. I'm going to minister to somebody. I'm going to help somebody. It may be on the job. It may be on the grocery store. It may be in the neighborhood. It may be at the bank. It may be at the ball game. But if you'll just find yourself faithful where you are, God is watching. And God will say, I, I see him. I, I see her. I see greatness in them. And I see what I'm going to be able to do with them in days to come. Nobody could see it in David. His own father couldn't even see it. Samuel the prophet couldn't see it. Samuel said, surely this is the one, the oldest, the tallest, the smartest, the most talented. And God kept rejecting every one of them till they got down to the least in the kingdom. And God said, as I quoted to you, arise and anoint him, for this is he. And the anointing came on David from that day forward. It was the anointing that made the difference. So one final time tonight, when you lift your hands, it says, I'm reaching up to you, God is my source. But it also says, I surrender. Joni's written a book about that. Her and the Daystar Singers will be back there to sign your CDs and books. But you're saying, I surrender. I give up. Lord, I give up my fears. I give up my worries. I give up my doubts. I give up my problems. I give up my hurts. I give up my bitterness. I give up my unforgiveness. I give it all to you. Tonight, I'm a candidate for all you have for me. Lord, I don't want to just be touched. I want to be changed. I don't want to just be touched. I want to be changed. I want to be changed from glory to glory. Never the same after this divine encounter tonight. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, fire for the Holy Ghost. Now, in Jesus' name, I need somebody to help me stand behind these people. I feel the anointing to pray. Touch in Jesus' name. Receive the anointing of God in the more fresh touch of the Holy Ghost. Ma'am, lift your hands up to God. The power of God's going to come mightily. Now, in Jesus' name. More in Jesus' name. All that God has for you. More, 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 more. Now, in Jesus' name. Touch of heaven. Touch of heaven. Mighty God, in Jesus' name. The fire of God upon you. More, 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 more. Take it, in Jesus' name. Take it, in Jesus' name, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Touch, in Jesus' name, the power of God. Fresh. Breathe upon her. Breathe upon her. 
Breathe upon your servant tonight. Breathe upon your daughter tonight. And Jesus breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Fresh breath of God. Fill her sails, Lord, with the breath and the air of God. Touch in Jesus' name. Touch more in Jesus' name. Fire in Jesus' name. Touch in Jesus' name. Touch in Jesus' name. The power of God be upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Find somebody you feel led of the Lord and just lay your hand on their shoulder right now and ask the, the anointing to come upon them mightily. Throughout this building, there in the back, in the, in the aisles, on the sides. You may be a visitor tonight, but receive all that God has for you tonight. God sent me from Dallas, Texas, of the United States of America on assignment tonight to loose the anointing afresh and anew on your life that you might receive it and take it and run with it and go to the nations with it. Hallelujah. That was a word from somebody. That was a word from God for somebody. Receive all that God has. I love that verse, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Rebecca, lift your hands up to God. The Lord wanted you to come tonight, and he had already told me that if I didn't get to pray for anybody else, that I was to pray for you for a transfer of the anointing. God has touched you with a tender heart. And David said, Oh God, a broken heart and a contrite spirit, O oh Lord, thou will not refuse. Touch in Jesus' name. Flow through her mightily. Lord, as I take her by the hand, may the anointing transfer into her life. Activate what you placed on the inside of her. Stir it up, Lord, and grow it big and great for your glory and honor. Hallelujah. I want to pray for this lady right here. Lift your hands up. Close your eyes. When I lay hands on you, the power of God falls on you mightily. Now, in Jesus' name, there it is. Touch. Breathe upon her. Fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. Heal every thought. Heal every memory. Heal every emotion. We believe you for it, Lord. Do a complete work. Complete, complete, complete. All that you have for me. All, Lord, that you have for me. In the name of Jesus. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Burn through you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's somebody... It needs to be healed tonight, a heart condition. You have a, the rhythm of your heart is not regular. You have an irregular heartbeat. Father, in the name of Jesus, you dwell on the inside of us. You dwell in the hearts of believers. And you, your word says that you sent your word and it healed them. Now, Lord, be healed in the name of Jesus. Irregular heart. We speak to you to beat regularly in Jesus' name. Receive that healing in the name of the Lord. Somebody, a lady with a thyroid condition, it's affecting your hormones. Father, reactivate that thyroid. Help it to work normal. Help it to secrete the hormones that it is supposed to do in the right levels. Heal that th thyroid condition in Jesus' name. We receive that healing, Lord, in the name of Jesus. There's at least three people that God is calling you tonight to full-time ministry. And you're going to have to make a decision. Now, it doesn't mean necessarily that you're moving tomorrow to Nigeria. But you got to say yes, because the preparation's got to get started. And if you're here tonight, you just, if you're feeling that, it'll be a confirmation. Listen, words should never be leading. They should be confirming. 
So if God's been dealing with you, and it's important that you be in agreement with your spouse, if you're a young person, to be in agreement with your parents. For in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. There's power in agreement. And you don't make major decisions like this without being in agreement. That's important. But I know God is saying that to you. He's calling you into full-time ministry and all you need to do is to just say yes, 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 yes. Well, can we just give Pastor John and Carol Arnott a great big God bless you for shepherding revival for over a quarter of a century. God bless you so much. Thank you for allowing me to get to come. Amen. Wow. Marcus, what an incredible word. Wow, the anointing is transferable. That's why we're still here after all this time. People caught it and took it home. Well, we're going to transition here in just a moment. And we're going to, for those of you who would like prayer and hands laid upon you, so it's not just a select few at the front, but this is available for every person in the house tonight. And really, what you're asking for is your heavenly Father to give you bread. And you know, Luke 11, 11 tells us, if you ask him for bread, he will not give you a stone. If you ask him for fish, he won't give you a snake. Why? He's a wonderful heavenly Father. And it says, how much more then will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Lord, we ask you for an impartation of the Holy Spirit on each and every one that wants more. In the name of Jesus. And let them be full of faith that when they ask you for that, that's exactly what they receive. More of your awesome, wonderful presence in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to ask that uh, we would have about a hundred folks men or ladies who feel up to it to help us with catching because we have a large ministry team here of about a hundred tonight. Am I right about that, Sandra? You're down there. Yeah. So if you will volunteer to help us with catching, you can just sort of hang back. The rest of you, like we did last night, go and stand upon the prayer lines and face the exit, face the bookstore. And, but don't just stand there looking around, waiting and wondering where are they, you know. I want you to spend 15 minutes just pressing into God and say, Lord, I'm here because I'm hungry. I'm here because I'm thirsty and I'm coming unto you, Lord Jesus, to drink so that out of my innermost being, rivers of living water will flow. So make your way to the back to, uh, under the mezzanine and stand upon those prayer lines back there. And ministry team, if you need someone to help you catch, hold your hand up and just keep your hand up until someone comes in, along and says, I will help you. And the minute you get someone to help you, teach them how to catch sort of properly without hurting themselves and then go to your, uh, to your assigned place at the back. Yeah. Kevin, underneath the, the flags, we don't need the chairs folded. We're going to have everyone at the back so we can keep the chairs up so you don't have to do that. So just a reminder, there are lots of prayer ministry team with their hands in the air. And so if you'd like to be a catcher for 15 minutes and help someone minister, you will get lots. You'll get all the prayer and more. And so just find one of these people and prayer ministry team, begin to head to the back. Prayer team, head to the back. And just that's where the people are going. So find all those people. And just if no one comes, recruit someone who's young and say, come and help me, come and help me. So prayer team, if you could just begin to walk to the back. And as soon as you get your catcher, you go ahead and start to pray. And friends, there's lots of room at the back. There are green lines. Stand in one of those green lines. And if you're at the very, very back, uh, face towards the bookstore. That's probably the best way to be facing. Everyone's uh, in the same area. That will be amazing. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you to be here. School of ministry students, just grab people and say, come and help me. So there's lots of prayer team that are still looking for catchers. So if you'd like to be a, a catcher, it's a, 
It's like a deacon, you get to serve other people. So find someone who has their hand up in the air and say, I can help you, I can help you. And if you'd like prayer, you need to be on one of the prayer lines at the back of the auditorium. And there's lots of room for everyone to head back there. Just a reminder, tomorrow morning, doors open at 8.30 in the morning. Our first session is 10 a.m. It's gonna be a great day. Tomorrow night, Kenneth Copeland is gonna be with us, Brother Kenneth Copeland. And the evening meeting has no charge. We will be taking a missions offering for Catch the Fire tomorrow night. Catch the Fire does amazing stuff all over the world. We start churches, we do schools, we do one-week transformational schools all over the world with developing nations, developing pastors. We'll tell you tomorrow night all the different things that we do. And so we're gonna be asking you to financially partner with missions and ministry tomorrow night. So we'll tell you about some of those projects. So again, if you're, if you are on the prayer ministry team and you need a catcher, hold your hand up. If you haven't found someone yet, just grab someone and say, can you be my catcher? Tell them what's going on. Ministry, like just give them a quick little ministry team training here. Tell them how to catch people. School of ministry, prayer team, you are released to start ministering to people right now. Lay hands on them and ask the Lord to impart to that person more of the Holy Spirit, imparting ministry opportunities, imparting all the good things that Marcus was telling us about tonight. So Holy Spirit, come, we welcome you. Just a reminder that if you'd like Joni to be signing any of the CDs or the books, they are in the Resource Center right now. And so you can head to the Resource Center if you'd like to purchase any of the Daystar music, some of the books that they've written, and uh, a wonderful ministry. It's been our, our pleasure to partner with them this week. And uh, I just love it, love it. So prayer ministry team, I still see a few hands. Prayer team, just grab a recruit and say, you're helping me right now. And uh, just lay hands suddenly on someone and <laughs> say, can you help me for 10, 15 minutes? Holy Spirit, come.